This video is basically everything we can do to a 110, that is a short nose rear diff. These are fitted only to P38's front and rear and late post TD5 uh, Salisbury replacements which are called a short nose diff. Now the 110 ATB is a unique unit, it is made for the P38 stroke 110 and it is different to the front diffs in a 110 and everything else which is classed as a long nose diff. So this video is going to explain to you everything that we can do to make this the strongest 110 rear ATB differential that I think you can buy anywhere and what we do to make it so strong. There will also be a video explaining what an ATB does. But in simple terms, an ATB is more commonly known as a limited slip diff, which is technically untrue. A limited slip diff works by a series of plates and springs, and an ATB works exactly the same way, but with gears, not springs. One of the advantages of an ATB is you can run it with ordinary oil. We recommend EP90 for the majority of uses, GL4 or GL5. A limited slip diff, an LSD, you would actually need special oils regularly changed more than normal and it's bloody expensive as well. So there's a lot of reasons that people fit these. In a road vehicle, you go ATB with gears because if you put a plated LSD in a road car, the plates will wear because of the mileage. With a geared LSD or geared ATB, that's not an issue. They're set from the factory, fit and forget other than oil changes. LSD, lots of fiddling regularly, resetting the preloads and clamping and ramp and descent angles. So here we go, let's see what we can do with a 110 ATB, strongest we can build. But, before we go galloping off into builds, a little bit about the Ashcroft ATB. This one here is a long nose, and yeah, I've wounded myself yet again, don't call me Mr. Bump for nothing. This one is a 110 ATB. Now, in the past, Ashcroft only made the long nose, and it was possible to fit this to a short nose casing. Bear in mind that long nose and short nose casings are completely different. Think of two different vehicles versus Land Rover. It'd be like trying to fit a Vauxhall Astra diff into a Ford Explorer. They are totally different. So the 110 was developed by Ashcroft as a proper full-size unit, and it is dimensionally different in many ways. So here they both are. This is your uh, long nose, and this is your short nose. And as you'll see, this is a lot bigger here, as opposed to that. Takes the same bearing, but actually the height of that to that is different, and the height of that to that is different. So the way they fit this to a short nose diff in the past was, was by using a spacer and it really isn't the greatest way to do it. We'll show you what we mean in a minute. Now this one here is a full size proper fit for a short nose diff and it fits beautifully until you want to actually peg it. And you can't peg it because there's a ramp there. But it's very easy to peg that because of the difference in the distance here that's missing. So what a lot of diff builders do, and time is money, if you want to build a short nose diff really quickly, is you put a long nose centre in with a spacer plate. And we'll show you how that works. So these become a bit of a problem when you want to actually put them into a peg casing. There's various ways around it. Most of them are horrible. Uh, we've come up with our own way of doing it, which we think is the strongest version. So a little bit about those that now explain to you that there is a difference in the actual units themselves. Here we have a standard Ashcroft 110 ATB and these are normally fitted to a 110 as is and these are bigger physically but there are ways that you can fit an ATB into a short nose casing whether it be a long nose ATB or as this one a short nose ATB. So here we have the long nose ATB now, if I measure the actual area the crown wheel sits on, which goes up against there, on my Avernia, that's coming up at about 22, 23 mil. Now, one of the ways that people fit this is by putting a adapter ring on, and that takes up the extra thickness 
that is needed to fit this to a 110. I'll explain that more in a second. Now here we have the rear face of a short nose 110 ATB. If I measure from where the crown wheel goes to the outer edge, we're looking at nearly 40 mil. And this 40 mil is fine because being wider, it has this edge here, which you'll be able to see in a second. And that edge actually adds thickness to the back of the 110 thin crown wheel and pinion. So as a standard unit, it's really quite a nice option. But when you come to pegging these units, you have a problem. And the problem is really simple. You've got a ramp here and there's nowhere for the pad to sit. So the way that a lot of diff builders will go around sorting this out is one of two ways. The first is they'll use a long nose ATB and a spacer plate. And the long nose ATB, as you've seen, is narrower across here. And there's enough room then to get the pad straight on the back of the 110 crown wheel. The problem with that is there's no extra uh, support because it's not there. And the 110 crown wheel and pinion being so thin is one of the weak spots. So what some diff builders do is they put an adapter plate on. The adapter plate will sit on there and they will basically put this in a lathe and they will machine it from where my finger is right the way through. So they will chop off all of this metal here, leaving a big wide surface and then the pad can sit straight onto it. So that's the second way that some people do it. One is they fit a long nose center into a short nose with a spacer plate. The second is they do actually fit a 110 unit, no spacer plate, and they chomp that off. Or the third way is the way we do it. And the way we do it is to spend a considerable amount of time on the lathe machining this angle here flat and go in here so that we've got enough flat metal to actually sit the pad on and still got the thickness here to add support to the back of the crown wheel. The problem with doing this is twofold. One, this is incredibly hard metal and it takes the second problem, it takes a very long time to machine that down. But we've got a lovely finish on there and we'll show you that when it's built up. But, but that's the problem, time is money. It's easier just to chomp that off in a lathe flat or grab a long nose and just shove a adapter plate on it. And there's a broken uh, tip off my lathe because these are so hard, it does tend to go through tips, or you can do what we do, which is machine it flat, and then we'll show you as we build it up. Casing's all done, shim's out, it's all clean, the collets are out, uh, the collets go in here, and uh, this is one of the later casings, it's one of our peg casings down there. So, ATB's got to go in with a new Dana crown wheel and pinion. And with all our short nose peg casings, we chop all that off and we put a proper locking plate in there. As you can see, that one's already bent. So here are the Domex carrier cap conversions we've TIG welded on. These bolts here are a grade 8.8. .8. They get replaced with 12.9 grade and mold lock washers. And here we can now put the uh, special locking plates in that we have made out of CS80, which are super tough. We don't even put a pin in here, we put a nut and bolt. We'll show you these when they're all fitted, but um, they're all ready to be uh, put on the diff. Now you can see how we do it. So this is the very corner edge of the Dana crown wheel. This is the outer edge of the ATB. We've machined that away up to there. This allows us to put the phosphor bronze pad on and the crown wheel gains that extra thickness as a result of the way that we do it. So, assembly time. This then is the ultimate ATB. This is basically as much as we can do to an ATB in 2025. I'll run you through the spec. We have peg casing. We have a super flange on the bottom with a genuine flange and genuine seal. Timkin tail bearing, Timkin head bearing. Um, the fossil bronze pad that sits behind here you won't really ever need to adjust it because the bearings we've worn out before the pads worn out. They, they are really long lasting. Uh, we've got the Domex carrier cap conversion, a TIG welded on with our own CS80 grade ears. And then we have the ATB itself. Here we've got 10.9 grade special bolts with Nordlock NLX 
dome double flanged headed washers. We've machined the ATB to take the pad onto that recess. That adds that much thickness to the back of what is a very thin crown wheel. We've got a good, very good blue check on it. Uh, we've upgraded the carrier cap bolts to 12.9 grade and again Nord locks on there as well. Uh, on the carrier cap uh, locking legs we put a nut and bolt through and that is all dogged up super tight. And there you have basically everything that we can do to an ATB at the moment in 2025. We're always looking to make things stronger, but at the moment, that's where we are. Now, some people might argue that this face here, that the crown wheel is sitting on and the pad is going to be pressing against, although this is seriously hard metal, believe you me, it takes me about two and a half hours to machine this back neatly. Um, this isn't as hard as maybe that crown wheel and this is going to wear. I'll give you that, it might wear because it isn't as hard as that. However, that thickness there that is added to the back of this crown wheel is going to stop this crown wheel flexing. So if I machine that all the way through and all you've got is the crown wheel there, that crown wheel is going to flex a lot more on a fossil bronze pad than it's going to flex when it's got nearly half as much again behind it. Um, and we've been doing this for quite some while and we haven't had any problems with it at all. So there you are. That is your ultimate short nose ATB. Thanks for looking. Bye for now.